All right, now speaking of judo, after both Iranian and Egyptian judoka snubbed Israeli competitor Sagi Muki, many are questioning why the competition has been politicized. So joining us now in the studio with some insight is Israeli sports anchor and correspondent Neil Kaplan. Thanks for joining us. All right, thanks, thanks for having me. All right, so first of all, let's just talk a little bit about Sagi himself. Was this an expected win? I don't know if it was an expected win, but I'll say it was not an unexpected win. In, in judo competitions, because of the format, the knockout format, you always have like three, four, five competitors who are contenders for the gold. Sagi was one of them in his mm -hmm. category, but it's obviously very nice to see an Israeli on the podium, first, uh, first male Israeli on the podium uh, as a gold medalist. Oh, yeah. So it, it was a big win, not an unexpected one, but a big nonetheless. And so, you know, what, what does it mean for Israel as a whole, though? You know, Israel is not known for being such a big uh, sports country. We're known for Nobel Prize and the Jewish brain. More <laughs> the academics. Uh, yeah, the academics. And uh, once you get such an achievement in sports, it's big, especially one year before the Olympics uh, mm -hmm. in Tokyo. So there are more expectations yeah. from Sagi. Uh, now, judo has always been some kind of favorable sports for uh, Israeli athletes. Since uh, he talked about uh, Owen Smaja, his coach who took the bronze medal in 92, uh, and uh, obviously Ori Sasson and Yerden Gerbi, uh, somehow in judo we get our achievements. We never had a gold medal uh, in the Olympics uh, in judo. Right. So now after this uh, achievement uh, of Sagi, we can have our expectations yeah, for next year as well. A, this is a big deal for the Olympics because I feel like Israelis I mean, they're always excited about the event, but yeah. there's not as much hope, maybe. Yeah, we're not going to be a part of it. <laughs> yeah, we don't, exactly. we don't, yeah. we don't always have the that's, representation that we wish we had. That's a nice Olympics. way of talking about this, but <laughs> sure. let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, the politics here. Clearly, politics made their way onto the a field, or I guess platform in this sure. case. Mm -hmm. um, is that even legal within the, you know, the authority that is that is, that is running this championship? Well, officially it's illegal, but it's not something new. Um, we saw what happened with Tori Sasson three years ago. Okay. And uh, in a situation like this, when you have Israeli athletes and um, mostly Muslim athletes in competitions like this, it happens. And it's not a new thing. You can go all the way back to uh, the Berlin Olympics in 36 or in Moscow in 1980. In every uh, competitive atmosphere with nations, politics will get in the way. But, what, but wasn't that already, you know, a big contentious issue with the IJF, with the International Judo Federation, uh, after, you know, the Abu Dhabi incident? Because yeah. originally they were going to, what, they were going to ban Israel completely? Yeah, they, they were, were, were going to ban and they reached an agreement. And as far as I know, there was a specific agreement between the International Judo Federation, the Israeli Judo Federation, and the Egyptian Judo Federation to avoid exactly cases like this. And still mm -hmm. it happens. It happened, it happens, it will happen. Um, you're gonna try to, to, to fix it any way you can, but you can't really avoid it in an atmosphere like this, in my opinion. Right, I mean, but are there gonna be any repercussions for at least, you know, the Iranian player or the Egyptian player? M in this maybe, case? I don't think against the Iranian player yeah. because you can't really blame him. You can't say you lost on purpose because right. you can't prove it. But uh, the Egyptian. The Egyptian judo is a lot about uh, respect, mutual mm -hmm. respect and putting politics aside. So I think maybe a fine, maybe a warning. I don't think it's gonna be something serious because you have to understand that in Inside the federations themselves, there are also poli mm -hmm. political issues. So I don't think it's going to be such a big um, uh, sanction against mm -hmm. the Egyptian federation or this athlete specifically. But I think maybe a warning not, not to let something like that happen in the Olympics because then it's a much bigger stage and they don't want similar things to happen there. All right. So the last question is, can you just tell us what sports very quickly we should keep our, our eyes out for in the upcoming mm. Olympics for well, Israel? Well, judo, obviously. Judo, after we saw anything us. else? Uh, we're always good at sailing. Um, we're trying. Mm. We also have uh, climbing in the next Olympics, okay. like uh, rock climbing and wall sure. climbing. We have some Israeli athletes. You don't always know, especially a year before, but judo is always big. Um, so maybe next year we'll have the same debate, but only about sports, not about politics. All right. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks Neil. for having me. Thank you.